Okay, we're gonna blow through this as a rough draft on the Hunter Managed Herds Power Prime presentation. We're gonna try to use this in different venues, get um, the general public out to look at this, see what they can do as private landowners to boost the deer numbers if they don't like where we're at. So Hunter Managed Herds, balancing habitat with herd size for the hunter. How many deer is enough? Each habitat can hold a certain number of deer. There's a social carrying capacity that the DNR likes to manage for, um, that the hunters might not wanna manage for, we might wanna manage for more different stakeholder groups to find this social carrying capacity that the DNR manages for at a macro level. We're talking about managing at a micro level, property specific or neighborhood co-op specific. Talk about hunter expectations and how to establish realistic goals to achieve these objectives. Um, we're gonna talk, we have to talk some about habitat carrying capacity so people don't think we're nuts. When it comes to biological carrying capacity, I agree we can't nail down a number for each property so it's not appropriate, but there's gonna be a couple slides here that shows some examples and say we're not crazy and that the DNR is not being forthright with people when they tell them that the habitat cannot support that many deer. It's simply not true. Um, talk about deer per square mile of deer habitat that you're, that you're playing with or managing. Talk about potential for regeneration or excessive browse issues and show some examples. Talk about ag versus big wood settings and how the, the carrying capacity um, is vastly different in each area and how to tell if you're still within the limits. Talk about how from northern Minnesota to southern Minnesota, the, 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 the habitat, the capacity of the habitat grows significantly. And we'll talk about manipulating the habitat, which is what's something we all like to do. If you want more deer than are there, what can we do to the habitat to make it so you can have more deer and still be a, a realistic steward of the land? Um, here's a slide from Wisconsin. Talks about the northern forested areas. Carry capacity, biological carry capacity, 30 deer per square mile. Here's another slide from the Wisconsin presentation. They define the carry capacity in their farmlands at close to 100 deer per square mile. So these numbers that we're talking about with these guys is not unrealistic. And if somebody from the DNR tells them that their area can't support 25 deer per square mile pre-fawn, they are not being forthright and honest. Maybe in the far northern reaches, but not across most of the state that we're dealing with. Your habitat capacity is unique to your parcel. You need to inspect the habitat. That'll be the focus of this. Inspect your habitat for browse impacts to maintain the balance. If the browse levels, when you explore them, are excessive, you need to add food and browse or reduce the deer numbers, which means harvest adult does. If browse levels are acceptable and hunters want to see more deer, harvest less than 20% of the adult does or none of the adult does to grow the herd. Explain to guys how adult does have a small home range and they can be passed as long as we provide them with food, water, and cover in an unpressured lifestyle. They'll rarely leave a lot of parcels, especially a lot of neighborhoods and co-ops. You can preserve those deer to grow that herd. Here's a picture on the left of habitat capacity near zero, where it's nothing but mature overstory with some ferns there. We also talk about how bucks are harder to, to manage because they travel more. So we're focusing on numbers here to drop more bucks in the woods if that's what guys are after. Uh, social, social carry capacity. We need to let people know this is how Minnesota manages the deer herd. We get all these different stakeholder groups together and the growers and the, and the drivers want fewer deer than the hunters want. They all have different desires. These social goals that are set are a compromise between the two. And it might not be what the hunters find acceptable, but we don't have to take advantage of the antlerless tags that are issued at a micro level if we want to grow the deer in our neighborhood. This is the way the DNR has to manage as a compromise for all the stakeholder groups, but as a managing landowner for deer, we don't have to manage for these levels. The DNR has to because that's their job. The hunter that owns land, buys land, pays taxes on land and hunts that land doesn't have to try to manage for the same numbers that the DNR does because that's not our job. Our job is to balance the deer with the habitat and quality hunting and, and, and learning when you need to and you don't have to shoot doles should be the, the goal of this process. Social management and objectives, how it's planned out. The DNR's current line in the sand is unacceptable. Percentage of satisfied hunters with the number of deer afield in Minnesota is half of what it was 10 years ago, and it's under 30%. Deer numbers have been reduced much further than, than announced or necessary. Issues presented as necessary for herd reductions are not legitimate, and they are not tracked. There are very few areas statewide with too many deer. And part of the next part of the process that we have to weed out without sounding like jack wagons is that, yes, deer can cause problems for farmers, foresters, orchard owners, and vehicle drivers, but put it in perspective so that they're not afraid to let the deer herd grow to levels that are 
quality hunting. Hunters have some control over how many deer um, is enough for their parcel or neighborhood, and that number may be wildly different than state decided levels. So farmers are stakeholders. Farmers can experience depredation issues, but the DNR doesn't track or document them. Um, studies have shown that deer predate, predate under 0.2% of the state's corn crop. So if we killed all the rest of the deer in Minnesota, um, we'd add 0.1 or 0.2% to the bottom line of the farmers. Now, does, does shrinking the deer herd um, alleviate farmer complaints from the farmer stakeholding group? This graphic says no. Uh, the peak of the deer herd was late 90s, early 2000s. And if we had legitimate tracking, it might tell us something, but we don't track it legitimately. The number of deer complaints since they changed the system here has remained consistent, even though the deer herd has been dropped in half. So yes, they can have issues, but we need to track those before we can recognize them as legitimately existing. Uh, forestry stakeholders. Minnesota cert certified forests have depredation thresholds by third party auditors that have not been exceeded since 2006. Yet the herd reductions continued for seven more years. These areas have room for more deer, according to the people that audit them to make sure there's legitimate regeneration. All this colored area is the certified forest in Minnesota, and Minnesota is the, is the largest FSC certified land manager in the U.S. But we could talk about how th there are measurements in place through independent groups. They were exceeded once in 2006. We cut the deer herd in half probably since then in that part of the state and continue that aggressive um, harvest for seven more years, these areas do have room for more deer, even with the, the forestry stakeholders in, in mind. Um, drivers auto insurance, deer vehicle collisions are a serious issue. They're not tracked by the DNR, but the Department of Public Safety shows the herd cut beyond 50%. And in big picture, if we killed every deer left in the state, we would reduce auto accidents in the state of Minnesota by less than 2%. So um, there, there are deer out there. There's always gonna be a, a deer out there. They are a risk to drivers, but if we kill them all, 2% fewer accidents. It's not the biggest issue we face on the roads. Micro versus macro management. The DNR has 125 DMUs, deer management units, and they manage at that level. Each DMU is approximately 450,000 acres, while the average landowner controls under 100. Decisions made socially by our DNR that manages for a social compromise and implemented at the DMU level don't often align with hunter desires. Simply put, if the DNR comes up with a compromise of 10 deer per square mile. Uh, hunters in a specific area might want 20 or 25. We don't have to manage for that 10. Property or cooperative specific antlerless harvest goals may be a better fit for local management objectives. Balanced in habitat with deer numbers will provide the best deer hunting in your area. The DNR has no desire to micromanage your properties. You need to take the initiative to do this yourself. So basically I'm saying the DNR manages at this huge level. We manage at the parcel specific level we can go out and analyze our habitat to see if we can have more deer. Now, does it sound complicated? It does sound complicated, but it's really quite simple. This is Steve's video that he had up on Habitat Talk, and I'll play that at the end. A simple inspection will allow you to study the habitat and set harvest objectives. Here's a gal um, measuring with a micrometer willow browse to, to keep tabs from year to year um, if, the, if the browse is increasing or decreasing on this parcel for the deer herd. So she's measuring the browse impact. Here's an apple tree with a pencil there to show how the deer like to browse apple trees. Um, you survey the habitat, maintain that balance with the deer numbers. Establish a property or neighborhood specific doe harvest strategy, balancing hunter desire with the habitat. Here's an important one. Educate the neighbors so they know the impact of the trigger. Let them know when they're killing more than 30% or 20% of the adult does in central and northern Minnesota, there will be less deer to hunt next year. And if they're not killing those adult does, there are gonna be more. So they can balance what they're seeing in the habitat with what they're seeing with the eyeballs, if they want more deer and the woods can support it, don't shoot the adult does. That's that's the management plan. And if there's if there's too much browse in the woods, you need to add more browse, add food plots, or reduce the number of antler or um, mature does so there's not as many population out there. Goals should represent a balance between deer numbers and habitat. Doe harvest goals dictate the herd size. More does drop more bucks. So by having as many does as you can in a parcel, you are gonna have more bucks to harvest as well. Measure browse levels to dictate doe harvest. Um, here's a, a, a peony plant. When deer heavily browse non-preferred plants, you have too many deer. This, this scenario would need more habitat or you need to shoot some adult does. If you're gonna manage your parcel for more deer, you need to establish a property plan. Uh, most people, and this can be the guts of it really in the end, is that most people hunt their private lands the same as they grew up hunting public lands. They scout the fresh sign, they hunt the whole thing, and they burn it out in a hurry. 
we can take and we can show people um, ideas for access, habitat improvements that include logging, hinging areas, thermal cover, tree shrub plantings. Access will be their number one priority at first. Tails means you have failed. If you're chasing deer out of the woods when you go through there on the way to your stand in the morning or the evening, you are failing at um, accessing your, your property correctly. So then we will, well, um, I say we'll, we'll take two people from the audience and, and pull up their plans actually on the computer and draw them up. Purple's bedding, green's food plots for this guy. We'll cover his access and why it's like that. Why access is when there's a northwest wind, south east wind. And tell guys, if you want the deer to feed in these plots, these does, to stay on your place and they have cover, food, and water, and we access it so that the deer don't know we're hunting them, we can grow the deer numbers in this parcel. It works. If we access it up the middle, if we have too many guys hunting or we play with a bad wind, it's not going to work. And if we share that with these guys that are concerned about the deer numbers and want to do something and give them an understanding of how to use their private property where they can manage it to a certain level, and especially if they can add some of these neighbors around here in their process, they can impact the deer populations in those areas. So again, it's a rough draft. I went as fast as I could. It's going to be a, you know, it's a longer presentation. We're going to slash some stuff out of here. We're going to add some stuff to it. We're going to tweak it, but I just want your guys' input on what you think we should take out that's too complicated, what we're missing that we need to have to get the message across so I can get cracking on this thing because we're going to try to do a trial down in the um, Rochester area later on this year. All right. Thank you.